Welcome to the channel. I'm Rev. Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. What do you do when you run into an angel of darkness? Who has all the words of an angel of light? You hear things that are flattering and double-hearted. And flattering lips and a boastful tongue towards you can deceive you and oppress you. It oppresses you by convincing you that people are in alignment where you are, but they're not. What do you do when there's a groaning inside you wishing for things to be in alignment with the words? Words to be flawless, like silver refined in a furnace, or gold purified sevenfold. How do you end up when you listen to the future faking and love bombing. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison. Let's see what we find. Life. Sheminit in Psalm 12 says, Help, O Lord, for the godly are no more. The faithful have vanished from among the people. They lie to one another. They speak with flattering lips and a double heart. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. They say, with our tongues we will prevail. With our own lips, who can be our master? Too often we run into people that meet us and want to align with what we believe and who we are. So they say things that they think we want to hear. And they do this to get an influence over us. But what happens is, what appears to be positive turns out to be oppressive because they lie. There's no faithfulness in what they say. Their faithfulness within the words that they use is, it vanishes. Flattery has a way of undermining itself. And if we listen to too much of it, we become entitled. We become and think more highly of ourselves than we ought. We become prideful. And we know that the Bible says pride leads to destruction. We have to be careful how we present ourselves in our relationship. We can't just say things that we think our partner wants to hear, but inside, we're living with a double heart. Regression and diminishment of character are what happen when we flatten out what we truly believe. We need to speak with honesty and faithfulness and we need to uphold the words that we speak. The Bible says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why did Shenemith ask the Lord to cut off all flattering lips and every boastful tongue? He did it because it hurts when you're deceived and lied to.
one thing that's important is to know that our spirit and our truth is reliable because it doesn't matter what words we speak whether they're truth or lies it comes down to reliability there's a proverb in the Bible and it goes like this and it's called the parable of the two sons in Matthew 21 and in verse 28 Jesus asks this is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Many of you have Christian pedigree and you've turned from your spiritual genetics. Jesus said, But what do you think? There was a person who had two sons. He went to the first one and said, Son, Go and work today in the vineyard. And the son replied, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the man went to the second son and told him the same thing. Go and work in my vineyard. And he said, Sir, I will. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? Now this all comes back to our words. One, the first one, said, I will not go. He felt. He said what he truly felt. He didn't lie. He told the truth, even though it was to his detriment. And that didn't bind him from being able to change his mind. He was able later to think about it and change his mind and go, you know what, I'm going to go. And he went, even though he said he wouldn't. The second son said, sir, I'll go. Yeah, I'll be there for sure. I'll turn up. But he didn't go. He just didn't go. He didn't align with what he said he was going to do. One said, I will not go, but later changed his mind and went. The other one said, I'll go, but didn't show. This brings us back to the words that we use and what's truly going on in our hearts. It's not profitable for anybody to be deceptive. That's why Sheminith said, Help, O Lord, for the godly are no more. The faithful have vanished from among men. They lie to one another. They speak with flattering lips and a double heart. That's what goes on when we don't speak the truth. One son said he would go but he had a double heart and he didn't go. He let everyone down. You need to be careful and able to identify those that just say what they think you want to hear. Their counsel is flawed, their lifestyle doesn't line up with their words and they'll mislead you when you least expect it. Double-heartedness is no different to a um, ship being tossed to and fro in the ocean, in a sea. Sheminif finishes the proverb by saying this, The words of the Lord are flawless. They're like silver refined in a furnace. The Lord's words are like gold purified sevenfold. You, O Lord, you will keep us. You will forever guard us from this generation. The wicked wander freely, and vileness is exalted among these people. 
you have to understand that there are people that are lost in their wickedness and their vileness. They're hardened in their hearts and they're double-hearted. And sometimes we end up in relationships with people like this and they deceive us and they hurt us. Are you one of these people? Is your heart doubled? Or are you faithful and you say what you mean? I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. When you meet somebody, you have to be careful that they're just not mirroring you with the words they say. They will think that what they say will prevail, but if it's just things that they think you want to hear, you have to be able to have the discernment to see that the words are shallow, you're being deceived. They just want to influence you. Help, O oh Lord. Help us to be able to see through the lies of the enemy and to be able to hear truth, speak truth, and walk in the spirit of truth day by day. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison. Thank you for joining me. And bye for now.